Today we're going to use async thunks with Axios to hydrate our Redux store with server data and to post data to the server API. Hello and welcome. I'm Dave. Today we're going to learn more about Redux by creating async thunks to fetch data from and post data to a REST API. I'll provide links to example source code and all resources in the description below. Please note this tutorial is not for absolute beginners in React. It is for those that already know React and are beginners with Redux and Redux Toolkit. If you are a React beginner, you should complete the React.js for beginners full course on my channel, or one like it, at a minimum before attempting this Redux series. If you are new to Redux Toolkit and haven't watched part one, there is a link to the playlist in the description. And to give credit where credit is due, the foundation of this code is from a project in the Redux Toolkit docs, but I've modified it for today's tutorial. I'm going to move at a slightly faster pace today since I do not expect you to be a React beginner, so comment below if you like this new faster pace. Redux does everything synchronously, so anything asynchronous has to happen outside the store. And this is where Redux middleware comes in. And the most common async middleware is Redux Thunk. Thunks are recommended as the standard approach for writing async logic with Redux. So what does thunk mean? The word thunk is a programming term that means a piece of code that does some delayed work. And that description really fits asynchronous tasks. We're going to jump right in from where we left off in part two of this Redux Toolkit series. We created an example bulletin board project in React with Redux Toolkit. You can download this starter code from the sources in the description, or you can create your own. I've got Visual Studio code open, and our starting point today is in the posts slice, which is inside of the source directory, and then inside of the features directory, and finally inside of the posts directory, and then you find the posts slice.js. What we want to do is remove our initial state that we started with. We were using a static state, and now we're going to bring in data from an API server. So we'll grab all of this initial state and redefine it. Actually, I'll just paste it in so I also have the initial state const there. So we'll remove all of this just with the backspace. And now I'll paste in what we're going to have for our state. Oh, and I missed the C on const. So let me add that and now expand this once again. There we go. So now we've got our initial state and we've got an object now. And so posts is an empty array because we haven't populated or hydrated that yet, if you will. And then the status is set to idle. And notice I've got a comment here because these are the different values we're going to use, either idle, loading, succeeded, or failed. And then we've got a spot to hold an error if we do receive one. And we just set that to null to start out. And now we need to consider that our initial state has changed. And since it's an object, it is no longer just going to be state dot posts we actually have a posts property so we need to change what we have here so let's find the different references to state and I'm going to do that by pressing control D actually I want to press control F to find the first one and I'll then search for state and then a dot after and you can see I found the first one and it says there are three so now I can just highlight the first one state dot and I'll press control D to select the next one and the next one, and we're going to change all of these. So I'll press the right arrow to go to the end, and we need to add posts after this. So then we'll add posts and a dot actually, so everything works. And I know that makes it look a little weird because we have state.posts.posts, but that's what it ends up being because we now have an object and then we also have the name here inside of our slice that is posts. So we have state.posts dot post when we refer to that inside of our selector here with select all posts. Other than that, we should also have state dot posts dot find inside of the reaction added. And then we should have state dot post dot push inside of the post added reducer. And an important footnote here, this is why we created this selector, the select all posts, because imagine if our, the shape of our state had changed and we were referring to the state directly, such as state.posts, inside of each component. We would have to go into every one and make that change. But because we used the select all posts and exported that, now when the shape of the state changed, we only needed to change it here inside of the slice. And now we want to create our async thunk right here inside of the slice file. So let's go ahead and import that at the top. And we're currently importing create slice and nano ID. So now let's add create 
async thunk right there for an import. And I also want to define a base URL here. So I'm going to put in a posts URL. And then I also want to import Axios. And so let's check our package to see if we even have Axios. I don't think we do yet. So we may need to add that dependency. No, we don't have Axios yet. So let's control back tick and say npm i Axios and install the Axios dependency so we can use it inside of our async thunk. It installed very quickly. We now have Axios here inside of our dependencies in the package JSON. I'll go back to the post slice and let's also import Axios. Okay, with that import complete, I'm just going to put a space there between the imports and the definition of our post URL. I'm now going to show you the async thunk that we are creating here and it is fetch post. So I just pasted that in and let's break this down now. So here's fetch post and it uses create async thunk. Now create async thunk accepts two arguments. So the first one is a string that's used as the prefix for the generated action type. And the second is a payload creator callback. And this function should return a promise that contains some data or rejected promise with an error. And you can see inside the callback, which is async, we are using Axios in a try catch block. So we are requesting information from the post URL and then we're getting that response data and I'm just spreading it into a new array right here. And then of course we have a catch, which could be an error message that we return as well. And note that we are getting our data from JSON placeholder .typeycode.com slash posts. And this is a nice fake API that does accept post requests and get requests. And so we'll be able to send data to it and get a response as well. So it just kind of helps us develop this application. Now in our post slice, we have a reducer here where we have created the slice and here's the reducers. But sometimes a slice reducer needs to respond to other actions that weren't defined as part of the slices reducers. And that is kind of like what happens here with our async thunk fetch post. So let's go ahead and add an extra reducers function that is supported. So we can put a comma here and after that we say extra reducers and this accepts a builder parameter. And this builder parameter is an object that lets us define additional case reducers that run in response to the actions defined outside of the slice. So I'm going to paste this in and then we'll break it down. I'll probably need to scroll just a little bit. Actually, it fills more than the screen. So we'll break it down bit by bit. So here the cases are listening for the promise status action types that are dispatched by the fetch posts thunk. And then we respond by setting our state accordingly. So let's look at each one. A promise could be pending. So then we respond by setting our status to loading. And then a promise, of course, could be fulfilled. And if that's the case, we set the status to succeeded. But then we're also going ahead and returning some information here. So what we're doing is saying, let one minute, we're defining this minute variable, then we're looking at the loaded posts that we get from the action payload. And we map over each one of those because our fake API doesn't have a couple of the areas of data that we need. And one was the date that we were using. So we're just setting the date with the sub function from date FNS that we had previously imported. And we're increasing the minutes for each post. And that way they don't have the same time ago set or timestamp. And then we also have reactions and those aren't coming from the API either. So I just needed to add those here and then we return that post. But essentially we get the loaded posts from the action payload. And then we once again add those loaded posts to our state. And here's the state.post.concat. Now also realize this is still inside the slice, which uses emmerjs underneath the hood or in the background. So we're doing things like concat and like adding minutes here that we wouldn't normally do because it would mutate the state. But inside of the create slice with emmerjs, that is how we do it. And then emmerjs handles it and makes sure it is not a mutation. And then of course, we also have the rejected possibility here. And then we would set the status to failed and set our error message. So this looks a little like a switch case statement, but it's based on the builder 
And then we have an dot add case for each one of these possibilities here. And this is all inside of the extra reducers. So it's handling something that did not get defined inside of the normal reducers part of the slice. And now we need to save and move on to the posts list component. Okay, inside of posts list, we need to go ahead and add to our imports. So we not only have use selector, we also want use dispatch here. And after use dispatch, we also need to go ahead and import use effect from React. So let's add that as well. There it is, let me tab down, there we go. And now I've added a space here because we're going to change some things here, but I also realized something besides select all posts, let's go ahead and add some other selectors for our state. So back in the post slice, if we scroll back up and look at our state, we also had the status and the error. So let's add selectors for those as well so we can pull all of those in. So here after the select all posts, I'm just going to press shift alt and the down arrow and it's going to duplicate that on two other lines. Let's call this one get posts status. And so this would be state.posts.status. And then the next one we'll call get posts error and this would be state.posts.error. And now we can import those as well. So let's go back to the post list. And after select all posts, we're also going to have get posts status, get posts error. And we can't forget our fetch posts. When it was created in the slice, it was an export const. So we just had it listed above where it's created. Just like we have an export const here, it was just defined above the slice. So we can also export that. So back in the post list, we are now importing select all posts, get post status, get post error, and fetch posts. Let me hide the file tree so we can see all of that. We've also got use effect from React and then use selector and use dispatch from React Redux. Okay, let's move inside the post list component now. And the first thing we'll do is define dispatch. So we'll say const dispatch. We'll set that equal to use dispatch. After that, we're going to work with our selectors here. So we have posts already. Let's go ahead and copy this down. And so besides posts, we're also going to have posts status, and we'll set this equal to the get post status, of course, inside of the use selector. And I need an S there to make it look right. There we go. And then we'll also have a possible error. Oop, I didn't get that selected. There we go. So we'll just set error equal to get posts error. And now, of course, they've turned the proper colors because we're matching up with what we imported above. Now, after these selectors, I'm going to go ahead and paste in the use effect. I'll save to get some proper formatting. But let's look at this use effect. So we're checking the post status and we're seeing if it is idle. And then if it's idle, we're dispatching the fetch posts async thunk. So here inside of the dependency, you can see we're checking post status and we have the dispatch also listed because those are defined here inside of the component. Now we're using fetch posts here, but that's imported above. So we don't need to worry about putting that there. And now we want to display the loading state in our post list. And we're going to start by extracting some of the post list component into a separate component called posts excerpt. So I'll go to the file tree and just inside of our posts directory here, we can create a new file. This is going to be called posts excerpt. .js. And then inside of this, I can type RAFCE, press tab, and we get our posts excerpt component. Now it's going to receive a post, so I don't want to forget to add that right away. But now let's look at the imports it needs. And back inside of posts list, we can just see what we need right here, these three. So we did have those in this component. I'm going to press Control X to cut those out and put them instead at the top of posts excerpt. So I'll just paste those in and leave a line. And it looks like I left a line at the top. There we go. And now if I jump back to the posts list and I scroll down, we can just grab this article that we have here inside of our rendered posts definition where we were mapping through the ordered posts. 
Once again, press Control X to just pull those out of the post list and we can replace this div here that is by default and paste in our article and save. There is one short change we need to make and we will not be putting the key right here. This will go inside of where we place the component in post list. So I removed the key from the article and we can save this component and now we can import it into post list. So we'll switch back here, scroll back to the top and we should be able to import posts excerpt. There it is in the list. Press tab and we now have it where we can use it inside of the post list component. And now let's change some of our logic here inside of post list so we can actually display the is loading state if we need to. I'll press control B to hide that file tree. So we're looking at the ordered posts and rendered posts here. And I'm just going to replace both of these and I will paste in the new code and then we'll take a look at that. Now let's go ahead and remove the problem code that we see here as well. And let's see what we've got. We've got let content. So we've got a content variable to start out with, which we're defining as we go through this if, else, if, else, if logical conditional here. So we're checking the post status. And if it is loading, then we're just going to say loading. And if you had a spinner component, this would be a good place for it as well. Else if our post status has succeeded, then we're going to define the ordered post that we had before. And this looks much the same where we sort them based on the date. And then we set our content equal to the ordered post that we're going to map over. And now here is our new posts excerpt component. And you can see I'm now providing the key here as we go through the map and then of course use the component for each different post that we have. And we're also passing in the post that that component receives. And our final one, of course, is the failed status. And then we set the content to the error so that can be displayed. And because of this change, we also need to change rendered post now to our content variable inside the JSX. And this seems like it would be a good time to test out our application. So I'm going to press control back tick, type npm start, and fire up React. Now I'm going to pull Visual Studio Code over to the left as this works, and we should see our React app here on the right as soon as the development server gets it up and running. And as I oftentimes do, I have an error. It looks like we're referring to post status here, and I bet I put post status with an extra S up above, and I sure did, so we could change all of those or we could just change this one here. So what I will do is just make that post status and save. And now we should see our application. Instead, we've got a blank page. So let's check out what's going on here by looking at the dev tool, shift control I. And yes, we definitely have an error. Let's see what it is. We are not reading undefined. So something is going wrong. Let's look here. It occurred in post excerpt. And so there is an issue, at least with the content. So let's look at the substring we're referencing in the post excerpt. I'll grab this, drag it back to the right. We go to the post excerpt component, and here's substring, and I see it's referencing content, but our API delivers the content in the post.body. So if I save that, we should be good, and we are. So now we have our form here at the top as we created in part two of this tutorial series. But let's look at all of these posts that we're bringing in. And they have lorem epsom from the JSON typey code website or JSON placeholder website. And we can see we're getting lots and lots of posts. We should actually have 100 if I were to scroll here through all of these. So yeah, we've got all the posts and everything is coming in as we expect it to. But there is one thing about these posts. They have unknown authors. So right now, we also want to go ahead and grab the users from the API so it matches up to the posts. And then our posts will actually have authors instead of unknown authors. I'll leave our React app running here to the right, but I'm going to go ahead and pull Visual Studio Code over so it takes up the full screen again. We'll follow a very similar pattern that we did with the post slice. But now let's go to the file tree and collapse the posts and go into users and select the user slice. We'll want to import or create async thunk again. So we have create async thunk. After that, we're also going to want to import Axios, which we do now have as a dependency already. So there is our Axios. 
And after that, we're going to want to define a URL again, and I'll just paste that in. This is our users URL. It comes from the same API, but it is slash users. And yes, we could create an Axios instance and set a base URL and then import that as well. I did not do that for this tutorial, but it's something you absolutely could do. We're going to set the initial state now, remove our static state, and just set it to an empty array as well. And now I'm going to paste in our async thunk, and it is much like our fetch post was. So I'll hide the file tree so we can get a better look, but we've got fetch users instead of fetch posts. Once again, create async thunk. It has this description here to start out with that follows the same pattern. We named the slice, and then we named the function. And then here's the callback. And once again, we're getting the users. I'm returning the response data inside of a new array and it returns an error message if we get that all inside of a try catch block. So very, very close to our fetch posts async thunk. And because it is an async thunk and happens outside of the slice, we once again need to supply something inside of the slice to handle that, and that is the extra reducer section. So I'll paste that in and save, and we can see it once again receives a builder. In this instance, we're only looking for one case. So our add case is looking for fetch users dot fulfilled. And then of course the action is the action payload. And here we're returning the action payload. And that means it replaces the user state completely. It was an empty array, of course, but we could have used something like state.push and then spread in this payload. And that would be something that Emmer.js would also handle. But by returning the payload without the push at all, that means we are completely overriding the state, and it also means we're not going to accidentally add in the users twice or something like that. So we're just returning the full action payload here. And now we want to dispatch our fetch users async thunk. And this is going to be a little different than we did before. So let's go to the file tree, and we actually want to go directly to the index.js. And that is because we want to load the users right when the app starts. So what we can do is first import our fetch users. There it is. And after we get that, of course, it's going to come from dot features and then slash users slash user slice. There we go. And then we're going to just say store dot dispatch and then call fetch users. We want this immediately when the application loads. And we can do this because we have access to the store right there. Okay, with these changes saved, let's drag Visual Studio Code back to the left, and now let's look at our application. And you can see we now have Leanne Graham listed here as an author instead of an unknown author. And Leanne should be the author for the first 10 posts, and then it should switch to another author. So I'll scroll down. Yes, our next author is Irvin Howell. Of course, the way this API data works, he'll have the next 10 posts and so on. But we should have 10 different authors, and we should be able to see those authors now in our drop down list here for author. So, yes, we do. There they all are. We have the different authors listed from the API. So now our last adjustment to this project is to change how we add a new post. So to do that, let's go back to Visual Studio Code. I'll make it take up the full window once again. We need to go back to the post slice and handle new posts. Now, as you might guess, inside the post slice, this is going to take a new async thunk. So I'll paste it right below our fetch posts and we can break it down. Wait a minute, there we go, and I'll save and I'll press Control B to hide the file tree again. Let's look at our new async thunk here called add new post. So once again, it's named post slash add new post. Here is the async callback. Notice it receives initial post data. And so this will be the body of the re post request that we send to Axios. And then we once again, get that response data. Now this will just be one record and we know that it will not be an array like we might have expected when we got all of the posts. And then of course in our builders case below under the extra reducers we need to add a case for our new post. So here we have our extra reducers and the builder. We have the case for fetch posts pending, fulfilled, and also rejected. So then let's add one more case below 
and I'll save if we can get proper formatting it would help let me get rid of that space there we go so now we've got new post and we're just looking at fulfilled again once again since the API does not have some of the extra data that we've been using I'm adding that here with the date and the reactions and I'm even logging to the console the payload so if you want to see that however we're getting the user ID here and the API provides the user ID I believe as a string so we're just converting that to number as well and then we're pushing that action payload to the array once again we're still inside of create slice so image.js is under the hood and we can use push here like would normally mutate state but remember image.js handles that underneath and it will not so this is the correct way to do this inside of the create slice only so now let's save the slice and go back to the file tree because we need to go to our add post form component I'll press control B again to hide the file tree and we need to replace our post added that we are importing with our add new post thunk that we created let's also add some extra state where we're going to look at the state or the status actually mm -hmm. so add request status and set add request status and we'll start that out as idle and now that we have that new state to work with let's scroll down I believe underneath the on save post click yes we've got this can save variable let's put this above so I'm just going to press control X and then come up here above the on save post clicked function and there we'll put our can save because we're going to change it a little bit so right now we're checking to see if the title the content and the user ID are true before the button can be clicked on the form let's refactor this so it looks just a little different and we'll also take into account our request status so I will paste this over to change it and now you can see we're still checking the title content and user ID but we've put them in an array and we're using every and then passing in boolean there so once again it is just checking to see if all of these are true but it is refactored and I kind of like how that looks after that we've got the double ampersand so then we're also checking to make sure that the add request status state is idle before we can click the can save or the save button and this is just verifying that we can save and now let's scroll up just a little bit we're going to change the body of our on save post clicked so I'll just highlight what's inside and paste this in and we'll break it down so we are checking the status now of can save as well then we have a try catch finally so we start out by setting our request status to pending instead of idle and at the end in the finally no matter if there's an error or not it is always going to set it back to idle so that helps us work with our button there and then of course we're calling dispatch here and dispatching the add new post thunk that we created and we're passing in the title and here we have the body and then that is the content and then the user ID Redux toolkit adds an unwrap function to the returned promise and then that returns a new promise that either has the action payload or it throws an error if it's the rejected action so that lets us use this try catch logic here so it will throw an error if it is rejected and then we're just emptying out our state as we were before after this process is complete so now we can save this form and we should be finished let's test out the app once again and we can try to add a new post so I'll just say hey there and let's attribute this to Leanne and we'll just say hey there hello and we save and we've of course sorted in reverse order so our new post is the first one here it's from Leanne Graham and there's the new post and we still have all the other posts as well so now we have taken this project and made it interact with an API to not only retrieve data but to post new data using async thunks to complete asynchronous actions with Redux a quick correction sometimes I get to the end of making a video and notice a mistake this is a small one but I do want to fix it we didn't do anything with the emojis today so I really didn't notice they were off but notice we don't even have a number by each emoji so if I click coffee it gives me the not a number so I knew something was up once I discovered this 
what we want to do is just go into the post slice and I just put in the wrong names when I put in the new reducer. So here are the correct names. We have thumbs up, wow, heart, rocket, and coffee. Let me just copy those with the zeros here. And in the extra reducers now for our async thunk, we want to replace these where there's the hooray and the eyes and just some different ones that we didn't have. So if I highlight those, save, and then of course we're going to reload our application and now we have a zero by each emoji and they'll all continue to count correctly. So what was missing were the correct reaction names inside of our add case for the fetch post dot fulfilled in the extra reducers. Just a quick correction there. Everything else seems good. Remember to keep striving for progress over perfection and a little progress every day will go a very long way. Please give this video a like if it's helped you. And thank you for watching and subscribing. You're helping my channel grow. Have a great day, and let's write more code together very soon.